And so at this time, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you, Senator Allison de Gazzone, again to our studios, and particularly you right here on VI in the morning. How are you doing today? I am good, but I'm not sure if you're able to hear me. I'm not hearing you in the... Um, okay, I will check that out in the monitor. Okay. On the um, headphones. Yeah, okay. Well, we will check that out in the meantime, but in the meantime, okay. you go ahead and talk, you right. Okay, good morning, everyone. It's good to be here again. I try to come through every month and give you an update with what's going on and staying in touch. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. I can't believe we're already writing 20 on our dates. It's just showing you how time flies. Um, I want to say condolences to my colleague, Senator Viale, who recently lost his mom. I, um, we are all heartbroken and we saw how hard he worked in taking care of his mother and still managed to um, perform and, and still put his duties. I went through the same thing um, when my mom passed right at the primaries. And then you still have to stay on task. You still have to do what you need to do for the community. So um, to his family, you know, my heart and my prayers go out to you from the office of Senator Degazan. So um, today I have Mr. Shamari Haynes with me and I wanted to bring him on since we just came out of festival, an epic festival I will call it because that's the term um, everyone has been using, what well, most people have been using on Facebook and in discussions. Um, festivals, uh, Department of Tourism is under my oversight as the chair of Chairwoman for Economic Development Regulations and Agriculture. So I wanted to um, bring in Mr. Haynes so we could recap the festivals and um, just have a little discussion. And this will allow me to hear um, his after, after debrief of what took place, challenges, opportunities. These are where we get legislation ideas from, from hearing um, from the executive branch and their members about what they need to be in, put in place so that they could have um, a more effective or efficient department. So first of all, I wanna say thank you and congratulations, uh, Mr. Haynes, on such an epic festival. Good morning, thank you. <laughs> um, I am a partier, you know, I won't, I, I'll, I'll be honest, and, and I think that's what kind of gave me an edge during my campaign because I kind of had the stamina to be up and be out there because that's how I, I kind of move. <laughs> but um, as I became a senator, I slowed yeah, down I because it, the, 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 we are 24-7 public servants, right. and I can't go to the soccer field when I should be somewhere else supporting um, another initiative or I have to read because I have a committee meeting the next day or there's five bills on my desk that's coming up, you know, so I had to slow down. So if you don't see me on the street as you did before, it's because the workload has tripled. But let's get back to the matter at of hand. I'm also live on Facebook, so I just wanted um, people to know that they could tune in and they could see Shamari and I and um, Mr. Williams as well on Facebook. So Shamari, tell me, um, I want you to give me an over, your overall summary of what you think, how you think the um, carnival turned out. I'm on a scale from one to well, ten. Well, festival, I'm sorry. On a scale from one to ten, I, I would rate festival on nine. Okay. Um, of course, we had a few events here, of course, um, with, a, with it being new, with the division of festivals being new. Um, but overall, I feel really good about the turnout. Um, the feedback has been great from the public. Uh, feedback from the vendors has been great. Um, yeah, it, it's just, I'm very late on speaking. Okay. The, the feedback has been excellent. So we're going to hit some key points. First, I want to start with the vendors, okay? Um, I know you had a few challenges there with vendors. I want you to talk about what you um, experienced and how you plan to fix it for the next one, which we have to start thinking about St. Thomas because you know, my, as a chair, it's a territorial position, right. even though as a senator, I'm a, I represent the district of St. Croix. So tell me, as it pertains to the vendors, what challenges occurred and how you would improve? Well. Um, you know, based off of communication with the vendors, it seems as though communication has always been an issue. Um, one of the pros um, since taking over the division, of, well, since taking over the Fusion Christmas Festival, is we were able to communicate with the vendors more. Um, clear and concise communication, definitely working in favor of both the division and the vendors. 
um, I guess since now the season has come to a close, we've had some um, bur burglaries, of, unfortunately, um, done to some some boots. Um, we don't have security. This was do, this was after this the was festival. After, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so this took place yesterday morning. Actually, um, I've been boots on the ground. We were hand in hand with the PD and a few vendors um, to find out how we could rectify the situation. Presently, we don't have any um, security in the village. Uh, security, our contract with security ended on Sunday. Yes. Um, however, I reached out to VIPD to ensure that the festival village grounds um, is in their loop of um, patrol, mm -hmm. a rotation patrol when our patrol is registered. Um, the vendors have until Sunday to remove their boots, um, which I, I think is fair enough time. We had to wait for a while to disconnect the power. Um, once the power is disconnected, then all of the boots, weather head, have to be disconnected from the line that WAPA around. So that was done. So now the vendors have until Sunday to remove their boots. This coming Sunday. This coming so Sunday. you give them one week. Correct. Um, they had four days of moving their boots, and they were giving them a week to um, remove their boots. Because they're tired too. Yeah, I bet. I, I, I'm tired too. You know. Okay. <laughs> but um, in, in all reality, truth be told, is that property, of course, is owned by Sports Parks and Recreation. Yeah. So I have to ensure that that property is clean and returned back to its state. You know when it was given to us. So let's talk about the what we could do to ensure that the burglaries don't happen again next year. Um, do you think that we should make sure, because this that means this is a budget item. Yeah. yeah. Because now we have to make sure that we there's enough in your budget to allow a week of security, security. afterwards. Correct. Okay, so that's something that you need to remember so when you come before I us for the budget, <laughs> okay, what the cost would be. Right. Okay, so um, I will say that my children thoroughly enjoyed um, the village as far as the diversity in the offerings of food and um, I think that the vendors went all out. Yeah, indeed, indeed. We actually have more vendors in the festival village this year as well. Um, what I appreciate the most about the vendors in the festival village is each boot for the most part caters to a different island. Yes. So you know you go get roti from a training boot, you know, you go get curry from a training boot, you know, all the Dominicans are in there, the Sandushans are in there, there's uh, Hispanic vendors, you know, yes. there's Cruzian vendors. So there's a, a, a number of different things. Um, I also really appreciate the fact that we we're actually able to get millennials in the festival village as yeah. vendors. Okay. That worked in our favor as well. So, um, you know, I, I feel good. I feel really good. On, despite the, the unfortunate, um, you know, recent acts, um, I feel really good about it. Okay. So that's the vendor, the vendor portion. Okay, so let's talk about um, one issue that br was brought to my attention, and I think that we need to really consider how we're going to resolve it. There were a lot of children that were intoxicated yeah. during the parade. And I won't talk about during the whole festival. I want, I'm speaking because we cannot control that. Correct. Parents need mm -hmm. to control their children. Totally okay? So when I get calls in my office saying, um, about certain <laughs> things, my thing is, I control my children and I encourage you to do the same. I know it's not easy, but I make sure my children weren't out there drinking. Okay. So you have to do the same. Okay, so let's talk about that because that's a serious issue. Now, when you talk about intoxicated children during the parade, now, now you get my antennas on, mm -hmm. right? Do you think implementing some type of band system where everyone in the parade must wear a band? The, the adults one color, people, children under 18, one color. If, you're, if you are participating in the, per, in the band and you don't have your in the, in, the, in the troop and you don't have your band on, the troop gets a fine. Here's an even... Um, what do you think about that? I, I love that, but here's an easy, uh, even easier solution. Um, you know, with, with me previously owning two troops, what I started to, because we tried that band in one year. I mean, of course, you know, it worked, but it became a little technical. I required all of my troop members to come with ID. If you ain't got an ID, then you ain't drinking from the bar. That's just the reality. Okay, so... So <laughs> my bartenders had to ID all participants. That's, that's just the matter of mine. And it would be the same as, as if you go in a club in the state or, you know, you go in a club locally, you have to present an idea and have to get a drink. At least that's what we hope. Um, and that works in the favor of the festival too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sit with all the um, entries in the parade who serve alcohol and implement the same concept. That's one of the ways to, to you know, stop the underage drinking. In our reality as well, you know, I, I was drinking 
I've drank, you know, <laughs> at that age before. So no matter what you do, you know, the, the kids gonna get yes, out of the so they're gonna you find just, a way. Correct. You just don't want to be the one starting. I, I think that any measure or any layer of security or precaution that we could put in place to make it harder, we we're responsible sure. to do that. I totally agree. So I do um, support the ID portion, but I still believe there should be some type of band so that even though selling outside of the troops, you know, people selling um, liquor and on the side, they too can be held accountable if they're seen selling to someone with a band that um, indicates that they're a child. I agree. And then these parents need to, not parents, um, adults need to stop buying drinks for children as well. So that is uh, um, a, a major, major situation. Now, I noticed that we had a large number of people that came home. Oh, yes. <laughs> and yes. what we did was kind of strategic. As the chair, I called in your team early yes. to give an account of your plans, Research of your actually. budget, of everything that you were going to do so there weren't any surprises. You would be, I was so shocked at how many people reached out to me saying, oh my gosh, all those things they have planned, I'm going to make plans to come home. <laughs> and they did. Spirit offered very good fares. And I noticed that Spirit's flights were packed to capacity because I went to the airport just to kind of see what was going on. Plus, I had my son who traveled back and forth. Right. And um, I noticed it's going to be hard. Okay, I'm going to read in between. Okay, so bear with me, guys, as I try to read from the Facebook feed and still try to communicate with Shamari. I'm new to this whole thing. Okay, so i, I want to say it was good that we had those spirit flights but shamari i think a part of the packaging for festival is that we need to figure out hotels and flights I totally agree. we're going oh, to eventually get so there. what's your uh, what are what are your plans what are you and the commissioner thinking about as because right now they're advertising more flights to saint thomas that's an issue you know i agree and when tourism comes before me, I want to really talk about it. And that is not your responsibility. So I want everyone to know that. That is not a sh uh, uh, an assistant director of festival <laughs> thing. But it needs to be a part of the preparation for festivals. Cheaper flights, more frequent flights, even better planes. Your thoughts? Um, I agree. Um, one of the things that I, I'd like to actually implement, um, you know, while in this position as assistant director, I would love for us to actually uh, provide package deals, right? So you, I know in like some Caribbean islands, you would actually, let's say you you pay a hundred dollars, and that hundred dollars would include a costume, um, lodging, um, a juve troop, um, airfare, right? I'm hoping I could eventually get there. Um, unfortunately, presently, um, aside from airlift being a problem. Uh, presently in the territory, there's an issue with hotel lodging. There's lodging sucks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely gonna have to sit down to our round table and have a conversation, um, and that would of course include uh, my commissioner for the Department of Tourism and a few other players to ensure that we're preparing and making um you know setting ourselves because up it's gonna be bigger. Of course, of course, of course. This set a stage um, for something massive. Of course, I have an idea. So, I think we need to rent a cruise ship where it starts in St. Thomas to allow people from St. Thomas, St. John, BDI to come on board, come over to St. Croix, where people from away can also rent spaces on the ship. Oh, I know. In the interim, until we work out, because we are working feverishly to try to get hotels on St. Croix and to get the Airbnb industry off the ground. Correct. So what do you think about something like that? Um, I think it's, it's a great idea. I mean, we definitely have to have a conversation with this man. Um, I know most cruise lines um, usually have their itineraries booked for book out at least a year or two in advance. Mm -hmm. um, so we would just have to have the conversation and I, I guess demand also um, mm -hmm. what the uh, important role in it happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's just for our conversations. Or I even those ships way. that are not, you know, the ones that they take out take of correct. rotation correct. because they upgraded are ones that we can consider. Now another issue was. The parade, the um, parking area, Shamari, was extremely muddy. Oh, yes, that was horrible. I literally, I, I refused to even <coughs> drive my car in there, which means I was parking. 
all the way up the street, all the way down by the beach on several nights. We have people that have disabilities who, in, in wheelchairs and so forth, strollers, what's the plan to make sure that's um, alleviated? Well, before I, I mention the plan, one of the challenges actually is that whole, that whole space altogether, that whole venue from the parking lot over to, you know, the fewer cars, that whole area is just problematic. Um, we've been trying our best to work with it. In regards to the parking, um, I think in the past, the previous festival committee actually brought in a parkour to push all of that park out, mm. right? Um, that's something that we actually learned throughout the mm. process. Mm. I didn't know that's something that used to happen. Um, but the t by the time I find out, it was like two, three days in. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, we really got a lot of rain this year. Every yes, so the natural, we, we can't day. really... She's a brand. Yeah, Every it was day rain. Well, rain. we farmers were happy, but... <laughs> My have God! Stick in agriculture somehow. Thankfully, though, the rain didn't um, run at the crowd. I mean, I'm yes. sure it deterred a few people, yes. but the rain! Oh my God! It raining up until now. It rained everything. Yes, and we're expecting some more rain coming forward. But um, I that has to be so. I uh, is that gonna be a line item? Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Funding, funding, Fund, funding, clear. funding. So gravel, <laughs> funding. gravel, everything. Gravel. Because oh, gravel is what really needs to be there, so that I every year we're not paying and paying again. So, um, so let's also talk about the rides for the children. Mm -hmm. um, I had no complaints for my children. I don't know if other parents had complaints. Every night my children wanted to go, and they were not like, "What is this? What is that?" They just. We're excited about that. Was it the same? No, we um mm -hmm. actually Zephyr, who is the, the, the vendor island rides, he brought in I think three new rides this year. Okay. Um one of the things that we were very adamant about was actually uh, making sure the Coney Island um the, the ground in the Coney Island was actually, you know, I guess properly taken care of. In the past I know when rain comes down it just used to flood and it just used to be one big mess. Uh, public works have been working very closely with the division of festivals so as we moved the festival forward um, I called down groups to get some plant ways and she brought in a plant ways and she made sure that it was working in Europe we actually brought in a rover as well so mm -hmm. you know granted all our rain came down we tried our very best to make sure that the grounds at least in the Coney Island was you know decent very good um, let's talk about safety mm -hmm. why do you think this carnival was so um, drama free violence free now, I want to say kudos. A friend of mine on Facebook said, respect to the bad man them who <laughs> held it down. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Thank you guys for holding it down, for keeping our children safe, for keeping our families safe. You, you don't know how it feels to as we're walking in the village and you're like, oh my gosh, is there going to be a shootout? Is there going to... And to know and to feel safe night after night nothing major happening i um, think that was major um, tell me what you did to ensure that um i didn't do anything in particular i think what we did is we set this the, we set the standard and the tone for festival i think that's what we just did from jump street and i think that's one of the things that worked in our favor um our next thing that we we actually did was we made sure that we had no security guards in the building um mm -hmm. i think in the past there were four we up we we added an additional four, I think we had eight, okay. um, who roamed. They were traveling, they were walking correct. throughout? Correct, correct. And they provided support of VIPD. VIPD man um, both um, entrances, uh, the north entrance and the south entrance. Of course, and then I've been on the grounds as well, like I security too. So, um, <laughs> you know, we it's just a constant presence, a constant presence, but it's standard and the tone of the set from here. I saw police cars from starting from the top of the street mm -hmm. at the entrance of the of the the, the village mm -hmm. the other side of the parking mm -hmm. driving around mm -hmm. so i personally saw them and i smiled because i said okay this is presence and so um i even saw them walking yes. through the the uh, housing areas that were there um so i want to say to vipd congratulations and thank you so much on okay. putting out the needed um the boots yeah. on the ground to ensure that our community was safe overall and this is what happened when you you communicate um because we we've been working hand in hand with our lieutenant jack um chief lynch um i've been yeah i saw know, him i saw jack yeah mm -hmm. constant communications with um commissioner valenor it's just communication is is the division of festivals is not government festival no yeah. yeah. development and i want to make sure that you know we all yeah. shine we all look okay. okay a major concern for the community was um 
Yeah. Lighting. Okay. Talk about lighting. Talk to attention. me about the lighting. In the park in Brecknockstead. Um, I actually, Yahweh Wapa, uh, shout out to you, Mr. Wapa, because this man is just all I say. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, Yahweh used this uh, when I requested some more lights went up. I came back to the village, the, 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 the park grounds, the same night. There weren't enough lighting. Um, I requested that some more lighting was added, and they, they did add more light. And the, the park actually had a lot of light. Um, and then aside from that, I requested that um, all the poles in the festival village um, itself and, and the perimeter to include the parking lot. I, I requested that more lights be uh, placed, and they placed more lights. Okay. Um, another point that I wanted to make up is that festivals is not, your role is not just about Crucian Christmas festival. Nice. I want people to understand that. Correct. Mr. Haynes and his role is responsible for all the major activities. There was one activity where I, I, I got a, some questions about that wasn't promoted. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know if there was a reason or maybe you felt something didn't fit in. It was Christmas spoken botanical garden. Yes. That's what it, talk Correct. to me a little from bit Amy. about that. Um, so Amy had reached out to me in regards to... Um, Amy's from the, the botanical, botanical gardens. gardens. Okay. Correct. In regards to us placing um, their events on the schedule. Um, one of my concerns was I did not want for us to print a brand new schedule and then we have schedule here, schedule there, schedule back mm. there, schedule over there because what happens is uh, the previous Cruise Christmas Festival Facebook page had already started to pull information and they had already had a mix up in communication. So what I requested is, is that Amy had actually sent me um, the advertisement for her event so them could have also advertised through our social media pages. Okay. So unfortunately it did not make the official calendar this year but it will next year that's fair. What I'm doing is I actually have a calendar presently that I'm penciling in dates. So I could tell you already what day is Julie. I could tell you how the contest is December 5th. Because one of the issues or one of the concerns this year was the Junior Calypso show actually fell on the same day as the Pan Fest. Yes, and that, that was a concern. Correct. The Pan Fest is actually run by a separate entity. So now that we have this official schedule that I'm putting together for next year, I'm just penciling in, um, you know, different events that are happening. And before finalizing a schedule, I'll touch bases with individuals to ensure that the festival schedule, the official festival schedule, is inclusive to more events. So everybody ranting and raving and excited about the schedule that we bought this year, but I know next year will be even. Even. So how soon you plan to have that schedule out um, and and let people know it's tentative, or maybe you can start as an online schedule and say um, it's updated as we get information before you start doing the official one. Um, I would say by the end of summer we should have an official. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. have to start early because. People start looking for flights for Christmas Correct. around Pre summer. Yes. Correct. I don't walk. I listen. I'm walking around the clock. Mm -hmm. I'm literally like walking around the clock. I've been in the village walking around, taking mm -hmm. notes, putting things in myself because I don't want to forget anything. Yeah. Um, but my goal is my commitment and my goal to ensure that the yeah. festival schedule, okay. the overall yeah. festival, is inclusive okay. to a lot more events because there's a lot of things that happen this season that you know I didn't know about or I find out about after. There's a lot of information that we were actually able to get. Um, you know, channel through the department, but it did not make the official schedule. So we won't okay. Kind of okay. Yeah, a lot of parties. Yeah, there's a lot of. So things. let's talk about the local lineup. Oh, yes. I oh, I saw on Facebook yes. how um you got a lot of kudos for really putting the locals out there. Talk to me about that. I we must come in the local entertainment. I mean, Excellent. I honestly feel from the bottom of my heart, genuinely, that the local entertainment point a really good show that could have been compared, if not better. Um, than the international acts that we brought in. Pumpa, Pumpa, of course. Wall. Um, Fusion Band, short at this wall. Big Band, short at this wall. Cruziano, I was very, oh my gosh. very, very <laughs> impressed. Yes. Cruz Rap, yes. I mean, I go on and on. And everybody knew all their songs. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. yes, I remember walking on the village and hearing um, Cruziano perform, and I'm like, this boy, and, like, the local? Like, and people knew his yes. songs and were yes. singing and wearing his shirts. Yes. and. It was really, really Local awesome. Really stepped up to the place. I think it is our responsibility to make sure they have that time to shine. Of course. Because as our festival grows, more people are going to be watching who we put to perform, and that gives them a chance to be selected. And now that we have the platform, um, now that we have the, the, that, that carnival platform that is, is, is out there, because we're picking up a lot of buzz from, like, you know, different carnival hoppers, you know, different carnival pages, they're now following us on social media. Now that we have this platform where we could actually, you know, 
push our festival, now is the time for us to take our local artists and push. And push the because artists. The Caribbean, the world, everybody is watching. What the, what, you know, what the Virgin Islands have to offer, more specifically, Christian Christmas Festival, because it was the one thing that you know used to happen, but it was very quiet. And they say we came with a lot of aggression. Yes, so, and, I, and, I, and I want to commend you on that. I want to go back one more um, point, two more things. I want to talk about the children parade. Mm -hmm. We have to work on the attendance. I, 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 I don't know if it's because only the parents of the children that are in the parade really come out. I, you, you, what what you can we do? Yes. But before I even give a suggestion, I mean, the, the children parade this year was not well attended. I, I must agree. But what I can say and what I can come in the community and is there, there were actually a lot more people out this year okay. than previous years. Okay. But it is my personal belief that the children parade needs to be moved to the day after Christmas. What happens is... Mm, not the day before the mm -hmm. main parade. Because everybody who is preparing for the adults parade do not provide focus or support to the children parade, right? Somebody mentioned about March in the parade. That can't work because resources are limited. So a lot of bands and a lot of trucks and all of those entertainers who actually go down children parade come down adults. The children, I spoke to General Sarah about this um, as well. You know, the children parade needs to move. They need to move before to the, day before Christmas, the day after Christmas. That's also a very good day because the mm -hmm. village traditionally opens on the 26th. So we could go from the Chiran Parade straight into the Festival Village. You know, I think that's something. Yeah, it just And it's up to us. We just have to do it. Right. So right. once you bring that forward yeah. and we, you know, to the team and, the, you know, we see but what the senators what? say. And you know I don't even think that's something that has to go to the senators. No, um, I don't think so. Um, I think that if we created in the 32nd mm -hmm. legislature this division of festivals, yeah, we have to give you all the autonomy to make certain decisions. And that sounds like a very good idea for me, because for me, I could see the day after Christmas, it frees me up because the day before, um, the, the people getting their hair done, people getting their nails done, everything preparing for the music, yes, you know, it's a lot of around yes, you don't, so we are competing, our errands are competing with the children's parade. So I think given it putting some more space between those two days is in fact um, something that's really good. Another thing I, w I was going to say mm -hmm. is that maybe if you're under 18, you have to be in a chair on parade. Meaning, mm -hmm. if you, you could have your one of your troops, mm -hmm. but, for, but for 18 and uh, 17 and under. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's more work, more um, everything. That, yeah. th and that also stops all that drinking and all those things because they're children. What's that, your thoughts? That's I, I, too ticklish, you think? Or? No, no, not necessarily. Um, you know, really actually, junior high schools and elementary schools are supposed to be in the children's parade. Adults parade, you allow high schools and... Okay, and so it is high schools, okay. Right, but realistically, you get 16-year-old, 15-year-old in high school, yes, right? Yes. So you still end up with an influx of... With that of, age group. Yeah, correct. So it would require us to just sit back, uh, take a step back and actually just figure out, is, there's, there's a there's a plan. I am not 100% sure of what that is as, as yet. But I know there's a way to, to, to you know, far thing and it and make it happen. That I know for sure. Okay. Just I, did, I did have one of a caller who called and said in regards to church parade. You know, he said, well, maybe if you have the children parade in Christians, then maybe you would have more people mm, attending. That's, that's a great idea. You know, oh, that's like, a good and, idea. And, and of course, you continue with the adult uh, parade in Phoenix then. So I think that the whole concept of 17 and under being in the children's parade, moving it to after Christmas, maybe downtown, those are all things we're going to put out there, but we're going to leave it on the division to come up with that. You guys were hired for that. We provide <laughs> oversight, um, me through my committee and my committee members to make sure that it flows well. You would have no idea how nervous I was. I, I, um, some of the Christmas I spent away with my family, I was nervous really? about the crime. I was nervous about participation and people coming. If all the people that said they were coming home were really going to come home. <laughs> and I was so surprised and so happy. And so that's why I said I had to bring you out here and to um, show Great. that as a senator, this is this is the fruit of legislation. It was Senator Saro mm -hmm. and Senator Jackson out of St. Thomas. This is their brainchild mm -hmm. to create Great a division of festivals. Really, it came for the, the um, to provide more oversight of the money. Right. There was not a good accountability for money, and they felt like they weren't getting the bang for their buck. 
And so you delivered, the Department of Tourism delivered a bang for the buck. And I want to say congratulations to your entire team. Thank you so much. And that we expect more. Just because we, we hit a high, it, it, it has mm -hmm. to get better. It has to get better. Yeah. And um, I want to say thank you to the elected officials that came out as usual. They were out there partying. We were out there partying. And also the cabinet members for the um, governor. It seems like every one of them were there. I don't know if he mandated, y'all better show up. I think people yeah, were just right. really excited to see I'm how our uh, country as well would have played out and meet the okay. um, mm -hmm. There were a lot of support from a lot of elected officials, of course. Um, you know, I, I was very, very, very grateful to see the senators actually, uh, especially those from St. Thomas. Yes, listen, also, Bobby Thomas, Thomas, Thomas I was shocked. He was hot on spot. I hit three from Instagram. I was like, what? Yeah, um, I saw, okay, I saw those. I also saw Gregory. Yes. Am I missing any? Of course. Well, yeah. not even. Yeah. But all I know is they were out no, there. Number, yeah. a number of folks yeah. out there. Yeah. Senator Gittins yes. was getting it on. Oh, I my God. It LA. was. Senator Vialet yes. wasn't. I saw him coming down in separate troops, and then he still did the, the right. quadrille one. It, it was just, comp it was awesome. And um, so, I, community, I just wanted to be able to bring Shamari, um, who is the assistant director for festivals, um, St. Croix to come in and talk to you a bit about the challenges the um, and this big achievement and to see that we do discuss these things and this is all proper planning. So we started planning from actually, uh, they started planning from before, but I brought them in in October. Yeah, we actually, we before actually the Senate. Right before you brought us in. We to be started. able to say, what are you gonna do? That's how serious I take my committee and the responsibilities underneath my the, the agencies that I have um, oversight of. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. We have FAIR coming up. I'm going to have the Department of Agriculture come to me and give me an update right before the FAIR, what's going on. And, you know, I have issues about a lot of their energies going into FAIR when we have farmers who need services done. So we need to strike a better balance there as well. I don't, I can't understand all the tent putting up and then farmers are not getting their, um, their places cleaned up. So I have issues there, so I'm not gonna go off on my soapbox. There but was wait, also- wait, but the big up we've been doing though, we can't, we can't forget Stanley and the tents. Oh because my gosh, oh, oh, wasn't I'm gonna let you okay. talk about that, Shamari. <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> First of all, I don't know where Stanley and his sleepless nights look at it. The energy, like you hear sleepless nights. Okay, listen, <laughs> like these guys have been going and going and going. So it, for me, or I guess for them, it's starting with um the the after Thanksgiving tramp. I mean, that, that's where the festival for me really kicked off. Um, and then of course, you know, we uh, actually they were the honorees for the festival. Well, yes, Stanley Vale. And then they were actually the, 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 the honorees, ironically, for the food fair as well. Um, and then, you know, they played the drum. And the serenades. Listen. I was sleeping and I woke up. I was like, oh my God, listen, I missed my mom I so much. Then, because she would go out and wave. And then they would stop in and run I about and get a few did. drinks and then and keep going. Yeah. From there, from the serenades, you know, they did the Trinidad Dance Parade. And then they wrap up the season with the Cruise and Recon. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay, talk to me about that Cruise and Recon. I What's your thoughts? You were that. tired. Uh, listen, I get up. Okay. I went right back in the bed. I can imagine. Um, okay. You know, the feedback that has been great. I saw some pictures. Um, I know some people who went. Um, they said this is this is the, the biggest crowd yeah. they've seen in a long time. Um, yeah. And I just, okay. I'm really glad that we're actually able yeah. to okay. include that on the okay. official festival um, calendar. Okay. So, you know, just based off of this year, I know that, you know, whatever we do, they have to be there at the end of it. Yes. It's a good wind It's down a good wind down. And then it go into that Three Kings Festival Correct. thing too. And we have to allow that community to have that um, Three Kings Festival Correct. time. And we need to engage and be a part of Correct. that and Correct. to embrace that part Correct. of our cruise and we can culture. Correct. Um, two more questions. If we decide to move Children's Parade to after the day after Christmas, what happens to races? Yeah. Horse races. Well, um, races that they barbecue. Um, tr tram. So, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, it was just a talk. A talk. Um, it so we need to think about it. Right. Because I know for sure Mami Juju it traditionally takes place on the 26th. Um, and that and is huge. That's huge. Yeah, this year was very successful. Thankfully, next year that would also be a part of official events. Official, yes. okay. Um, it didn't make it this year, but it will next year. God's fear. And then um, in regards to horse races, I need to find out, um, I need an update on that. Um, 
So yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so so what, those are part of the discussion. So we'll just correct. stick a pin there. Correct. Correct. And I think that was Marsha Knight on the um, on Facebook who brought up that question. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then also another um, point that came up. Lord, I hope Fred Frederick said don't throw something at me. <laughs> um, one person said, "How about putting the adult parade in Christian side because it's a longer <laughs> road?" Um, I like the idea of that. That's not my. I'm just throwing that out there. What do you think? Mo because you pay all that money, do you want to parade a little longer, right? What What I would recommend, or maybe um, consider, is also extending the parade out in Fredericton first. There's a lot of logistics mm -hmm. that goes into mm -hmm. uh, 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 planning and preparation for a parade. You know, there's a building at the judges stand, building at the governor's review stand. You know, there's PD, um, there's EMS. There's a lot of logistics that goes into just putting a parade on the road. And the boot owners were already done set up. They're already set correct. up. Oh correct. my gosh, because we have to think about their investment. We literally take money from them. What really worked in everybody's ear is the separation of food fair and Druve. Because yeah. after the Druve, everybody went, went to the village to and eat. The, the village, I, I, if, if I'm not mistaken, all the boots were open just about. Yeah. And so that really worked in their favor. So it's just it's just us having a message. Okay. That's, that's all well, we require. The great thing is that it was so good that. It spurred Hello. so many ideas and conversations yes. Yes, that is. where we're going to end up next year is going to be even better than this. It can it only get better. better. Yep. And I am so proud of the Department of Tourism and to my community. Again, um, I have to showcase myself as a senator um, for what, okay, so what the Gazan, what's one of the things that she does is not just agriculture, Department of Tourism for mm -hmm. falls under my oversight okay. as a chair. And so I stay yep. on top okay. of these I'm things. Like and I keep you informed and I make sure that we understand what's needed budget wise. So that comes from you, Mr. Haynes. So I expect to hear what what's you needed fund wise. <laughs> and and then Senator um, VLA would be the one as chair of finance to help us make it happen. So it's a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I know you're getting ready for St. Thomas. Yeah, um, to I'm, support them. I'm, yeah, yeah, of course. I'll provide some support to St. Thomas, but my commitment, you know, I really St. Croix. And, and that's where our that. commitment really lies. Because St. Croix has, St. Thomas has, these, they got a shine, they got a product. And I mean, we're one, one band, one song, right? But St. Croix, I cannot allow for St. Croix to, to so, fall at the bottom. We have a good right. product. We have a good product. This I, is I'm something. A, I think I'm going to lie. Have a good product that could compete with <coughs> numerous places. So it's my investment, my my. Commitment. And that's what you are. You're the assistant director for Saint Croix. Croix. Okay, so you do you get involved in the ag fair and these so types of things? Talk to me. So you're, you're, so you're shifting to to ag ag fair mode. Correct. Okay, talk yes. to me. So um, ag fair, mango mele, you know, anything that's deemed as a festival or or a, a major event would definitely fall under the division of festivals. Um, I need to revisit the bill just to, to get a more familiar in regards to just how much of a part we're, we're going to play. Because I, I, I'm a... Because the calendar needs to be out as soon as possible because um, there's a lot of events that happen and people right. need to know what's Correct. going on for Correct. flights. Correct. Fl flights, you know, there's... Aside from flights and lodging, right? There's a lot of events that happen outside yes. of the outside of yes, the fair. fair. Um, and I, I would like for us to promote and put information out. Okay, okay. Um, and also, I think that um, we have a lot of these EDC companies that benefit with taxes. And I think that as the Chair for Economic Development, I need to speak with EDA about getting some of them to maybe making it some type of legislation that you have to support a school for festival. Mm -hmm. And come up with an amount and um, so that that could probably help the children's parade as well so that there's more participants. Right. So um, someone just suggested it was um, Adams is the name that said that, and, and, I, and I really think that's a great idea. Thank you so much for that. So, I think in Antigua, if I'm not mistaken, I know at one point, um, I think their carnival committee used to actually provide either costumes or um, or funding to all of the schools to participate in the Trump parade. I don't know if we would ever be able to fully get there, um, but what I would love, uh, for, what what I would love to happen here in, in, in the territory is, I'd love for the schools to actually be be involved. You know, this year we yeah. actually um, honored Ricardo Richards Elementary School as a grand marshal um, for the children's parade, and you know, it doesn't matter rain or shine, big or small, you know, fire or wind, Ricardo Richards will have an entry in the parade. So that, I'd like to see that commitment from from the schools. And that may even have to bring more parents and other 
uh, if they allowed to be the correct Yes, Indeed. yes. Uh, so the thing is, um, it always comes down to money. Correct. A lot of parents can't afford um, to put their children in. And um, I, I think that we could probably right, get some it. of these companies to, to donate Hello. and sponsor. Correct. correct and yeah. get more participants out of there. Right. Um, what about Boat Parade? Um, what about I, I know that that is not your responsibility, and that is the, the I think it's Christian what? said, the retail the, C yeah, CRA. CRA. Christian said but oh, okay, right, I, right. I think okay. we need to get involved right. somehow. Okay. That brings out so many people, it's ridiculous. I agree. It can bring people from other islands on their boats. And the boat, the boat, the boat right after it's a big center last thing. So I think you need to put that as part of your mix as to get involved or push or it's a part get of our the boat official, to really it's a part of our official um festival event schedule. Um I'd like for us to actually get put more of a hand in it. Um prior to the boat ride happening, you know, we actually had a show at the same station that we used to host every Thursday. Um and we had some pilots who had actually called in and made suggestions in regards to, you know, we hosting a boat ride in Frederickstead or, you know, the boat parade alternating, you know, from town to town. Oh. Um, one of the things that I would like to do mm -hmm. to Frederickstead or bring back is you keep the boat parade in Christianstead mm -hmm. and in Frederickstead, after the festival season, you do the bring back boat race mm -hmm. and you bring oh, okay. everybody to Frederickstead okay. Beach. Yeah. So yes, yes. All the boat, my ticket boat. Yes. They, they, they want to be a part yes. of things. They want to be involved, yes. right? So you bring everybody to Frederick Center. So, mm -hmm. we, like I said, we walk in, we have these okay. conversations. Okay. It would, it, it's going to boil down to, to funding. I mean, that's a reality. That's of a it. reality. Um, but what oh, we, God, senators and funding. Yeah, but, but what we've done, we've, <laughs> on, our, on our end too, we've actually, you know, we've and solicited. More the and more revenues. You're right. So give and you get back. We've even solicited more. sponsors as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we have some individuals, you know, Cruise and Rome sponsored the festival this year, the Strategy Group, um, you know, um, Virgin Islands Lottery, you know, there's a really? excuse okay. me, yeah, we had okay. we, we had some sponsors too, but into festival this year, President. Thank, thank you so much yeah. for those sponsors. So it's just again, it's just conversation, it's just us starting mm -hmm. early. Now we have a whole year in advance that we can actually plan. So it won't, it could only get so you have your budget written out and of your all of your expenses, correct? We're finalizing that we can audit and see the, who we, were paid. We're working on that, who, okay. We're that is vendors. that was the demise of we the have, last that we gotta stay on top of the money we have some vendors who um we're still paying out um in all reality majority of the entertainers have been paid um but we have some entertainers we have some vendors who have not been paid as yet and we're working on getting those individuals paid okay, okay. i had a caller who wanted to know now that we so you look at the calendar for 20 uh at 21 mm -hmm. yes is that you see where the first uh and New Year's Day falls, right. and and uh, also, so the way to know what is, have you decided on what days you're gonna have the parades? The HRM parade, I could this is confirm. Uh, the the food fair will be December thirtieth. Uh, Juve will be December thirty first. The children's parade. You can't say children's parade yet because you what? say you're gonna discuss. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but 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 as of right now, tentatively. tentatively. Here we go, uh, so parade. Yeah, tentatively, the children's parade will be January first, and the adults parade will be January second. Okay. 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 See, and that's a major thing, though. I'm not saying that love uh, Juve being at the first. But yeah, Juve was because say that when you have the situation and the days that they fall now, correct? Uh, you know that that is a situation that you got to deal with. Right. But you see, doing that on the first, people gonna be tired from partying, bringing in New Year's, and then coming <laughs> to the children parade. That's we gotta party. put the parade for the children on a day I where am. people are less. Destructive. In Trinidad, right? In Trinidad, the Trump parade is like a week or two before they're off. They're, you know, they wrap really? up. Really? Kind of yeah, the Trump parade in Trinidad is huge. It is like. And it's so they move it like away it, from the they adults. They have its own time. They have its own time. It's it's like, I think it's like two weeks before, okay. like a week before, two weeks before. Kind of Monday and Tuesday, and that's yes, you. Are. Like people are about that. Well, I just think we need to think about it because it is imperative that we get better attendance for the children's parade and of more course. participants. Of course, we need to beef that up. And I want to say, um, I'm so proud yeah, of those, that. Mm -hmm. the children Mokojumis yes, that came right. from St. Thomas. They Even those did who are an from here. awesome job. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't know they were from St. Thomas, but I'm saying that they came over, yes, and and that said a lot. Yep. And then our local ones, yep. you saw what they were doing, yep. the the talent. Yep. And I just want to say to the um the it's the mm -hmm. the guardians, 
The Guardians, yes. Oh, yes. You guys know. continue to um, yeah, outdo yourselves, about. and the children seem to yeah. be getting younger, yeah. and I'm just so impressed. My son wants yeah. to join, yeah. so he will be joining, and he was looking at them in awe. Yes. That's something so, that I always wanted to do. Right. Oh, okay. oh, me too, but I can't go up with my okay. side. I know. Yeah. Still. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, again, um, so I'm going to end this piece now on the last 10 minutes. I just want to talk about some things that are happening in my office. But I want to say thank you so much, Amari. Um, I always tell people, you know, my when I said playtime is over for my campaign slogan, it was not against other people or a slight against incumbents or anything like that. It was just that we have to stop the playing and start thinking differently, be more innovative, yep. and understand that we have the opportunity and uh, we're poised to be so successful here in the Virgin Islands. And so as, as a chair, every agency or department that's under me, I take it seriously. And this is some of the fruit of it. I, I'm going to give Senator Saru and Senator Jackson their shine in, in pushing this whole division of festivals. Yes. But, you know, the my committee members of um, the Committee on, on Economic Development, yeah, Regulations, yeah. and Agriculture, we stayed on top of you guys, Hello. and this is the fruit of it. So thank yeah. you so much. No problem. Thank you for the support. Okay. So um, uh, no, real quick, I know after we talked about all that fun, we have to get into more technical okay. issues. Um, yesterday, I'm proud to say that two of my bills um, came out of rules. Um, the stormwater bill, which um, bill number 33.0037 and bill number 33.0065 came out of rules. Um, everyone voted in favor of it, and I want to say thank you to my colleagues. So the stormwater bill, all the water you see running all over the place when it's raining, we are a step closer to getting that alleviated and um, redirected to ponds for farmers and for agriculture use. And then now um, we're also one step closer to getting our aquifers um, studied to check the capacity, contamination, the quality of water so that the next phase would be to do wells and um, well maintenance for, the, for agriculture as well. So another area that I pushed was agriculture and I am delivering for agriculture. The number, um, I want to commend um, Senator Francis. Um, I joined in on his bill where he wanted to increase the budget for agriculture. I jumped on that, and uh, we've been pushing that, and so far, um, in fact, it came out of session, the, the last, last one, oh yeah, so they're going to have a, a better budget, so we can't talk about agriculture until the senators give them the money and give them access to water. That's, that's the basic, and that's what um, I focused on, and I, I am delivering, and I want to thank my team, and I want to thank all those in the community who give me technical support. I want to thank um, the Department of Agriculture, um, Commissioner Positive Nelson, for working with me on coming up with the aqu aquifer study to make sure that the water is good and clean and we understand the capacity so that we can get it to the farmers. Um, and I want to say thank you to um, Commissioner Oriol uh, for DPNR, who is working, going to be lead, taking the lead on the stormwater management plan so that we can get these dams, like the Cricket Dam and the different ponds rehabilitated and, and going again. These are major efforts and um, it takes a lot of technical expertise. It takes a lot of money. Our ancestors had these things planned out already with all the way the guts were and the flow of the water. So we just need to maintain it and get back to that. Get back to that so that we can res preserve our water and keep the debris and, and so out of the oceans and away from the streets and the neighborhoods where they're destroying the roads. So that was a major win for um, for me yesterday, which is you know major win for the farmers and for the community as a whole. I will be having my brochure, my um, end of the year recorded brochure out soon, and I will be distributing it so people will see how busy we have been. And we have a lot of plans for the new year. Right now, I looked at the Senate calendar and I just held my head because this is election year. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, like, I worked so hard during the campaign to convince and you guys and the community of that I could do the work. And now that I'm in, I'm doing the work. So here it is now, I have to present my record to you. What have I done? And I'm proud that I have uh, my team and I have done a lot. 
and so i am going to be proud when you see me on the campaign trail saying i did this i did that and thank you to my colleagues for supporting me on this and on that um the report card should be a very good report card so i try not to get overwhelmed thinking about um this whole election thing because they everywhere i go is like is election year is election year i try not to focus on that mr williams too much because if you do that you get this anxious anxiety and then you kind of get thrown off your job yeah what you're all about. you know yeah. so i every month i've been on the radio stations letting them know what i'm doing i'm out there as much as possible i don't party as hard as i used to because i'm tired and i just can't and they're traveling and they're moving around and so i try to save a lot of my time for my children when when i'm home yes. that's that's the point that's they important. are number one for me because they can't slip in school i gotta stay on top of their civic enrollment you know their activities extra curricular activities and they're doing so well and it's because of the support that i have and people like kendra i gotta speak about kendra she literally helps me with my children when i'm away literally make sure they eat get to school every it's amazing what it takes to do this job and to do it well and my colleagues and them are working so hard and i want to also say about senator james you see all these local acts that we heard of for um the festival he has been pushing the local the scene local yes and so he was on top of making sure that they get out there and they get that shine so it's 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 a few when when you see all these great things you have people working behind the scenes making these things happen this is just such a great team of senators that i am working with and um, we don't have all that drama you don't hear the yelling you don't hear you notice like you don't hear that because everybody's busy working yesterday um senator barnes pushed out um the czm and that is such a technical bill i sat there listening and and you know, everybody has to stay in their lane. So I understand agriculture and economic development. She understand all the environment stuff and the zoning and DPNR stuff. And it was just amazing hearing her expertise and everyone else um, on the committee talk. And I'm proud to be a part of the 33rd. I'm proud of what we're doing. And I do have um, um, concerns, like the, most people, about some of the things that, that we're, we are not hearing of from the executive branch. We want to hear more, but guess what? No matter who is in, we're going to want to hear more. Mm -hmm. And we should be pushing them to do more, to, to get us more. Get the hospitals together. Get the schools together. This WAPA situation, I'm telling you, it. we work so hard on this WAPA thing, I don't know what else to do. Like, I feel like I'm now a WAPA worker. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's because we want to make sure things are right. And we're not going to piecemeal it. We're going to do it right. Well, with the governor state of the territory address oh yeah uh, at monday, that's yeah, monday that really in terms of uh, you know which way uh, the administration is going yes that's monday and so we have to sit back and really listen to what he's saying to see how we can support or what we don't agree with so that we can come up because as a separate branch of government it's not just to sit down and agree with everything the governor says we may have a different plan a different way to achieve that goal and that's that's where our power comes in by mandating it the way we think it should be done and then giving them the funds and the resources to execute and implement. So um, my time is almost up, but again, Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I want to say kudos and thank you and God blessings to my team, Sonia Andrew, my chief of staff. I, when I, my team is just awesome. Marquita Scotland, has me out there, my press releases, all my communication, this live story going on here on, on Facebook. This is all her getting me out there. And when we have meetings, the way she strategizes on how to make sure I stay relevant is really important. I have Kiana Tong, um, all my graphics, all my information that goes out in the community about um, what I'm doing or responding. She's excellent at that. And I have Richard Nix. And I just brought on a consultant to help me with um, strategizing for my, my, my bills and how to make them move faster and to make them, um, write them in a way that I get more buy-in. So thank you to my team, to each and every one of you. I could not be here and I could not um, keep moving without you. Thank you so much. And to the community, thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. 
I try to talk on Facebook as much as possible. That's the way I, tr I stay in touch. I have people that tell me, stop responding. No, I won't. I'm going to respond and stay engaged so that you know what's going on. And to teach you on the role of a senator. Mm -hmm. Our role is not to be running up and down doing the commissioner's jobs. Our role are to find the money, appropriate, create and draft and, and get these bills going, create law, and to support um, the, the districts as a whole. So um, we are doing our jobs, okay? And we will help as we can with our constituents with different issues. But a lot of the issues that are out there are not the senator's roles, but we still um, oblige and do what we can because we care. So thank you so much, and Mr. Williams, again, I love you. Thank you to my community. I love you. Okay, and that, of course, was Senator Alison.